Today is an initial look of the Ronin 40 and as my title says, this camera is totally a workout. I mean, this camera is quite heavy. 5.5 kg with my 35 1.4 GM here. So this is definitely not lightweight in any way and will definitely give you a workout. However, once you remove that out of the equation, the Ronin 40 is truly an awesome camera. Today will be an initial look of the Ronin 40 and this is based on my experience of doing two video shoots with the Ronin 40 itself. Let me show you some footage as I talk, you know, for this section itself. As you can see, some of the footage are running along and I use this Ronin 40 for two of them. One of them was a daytime, more of a cinematic vlog type of video. And second was a night video shoot with Joy Su and that was something like a dance video that I usually do with her every month to, you know, shoot something nice for the community itself. Now, the Ronin 40 has many good things and some bad points and I'm going to share with you my opinions of them while using the camera. This is not a full review. In fact, I actually recorded almost a full review previously, but I felt it was a bit too long-winded. So, I decided to cut short and just focus on my experience using the camera itself. So, first up, even before we talk about carrying this camera out to do a video shoot, you need to carry it out first. And the case that the Ronin 4D comes with is this DJI Pro case. And this case is fantastic. I rarely talk about cases of a camera because it usually comes as a compliment gift and it normally suck. But the one that DJI gave is really nice. It protects the whole camera. But not only that, it allows you to put the camera in the case except for the handles. Everything else could be assembled and balanced. You can put this whole camera in the case with the lens on, with the LiDAR on, with it being already you know, balanced properly, with the batteries attached. Fold in the, just you have to fold in the LCD like this and you can go in the case. The only thing you need to do is of course, remove the two front handles. These front handles have to be removed uh, and they have to be stored separately. But if not, when you reach the place itself, you just need to attach the handle and you are ready to shoot. This is the fastest you can ever do in a setup outdoors. If you have used any gimbal camera setup before, you will at least need 10 to 20 more time the amount of time to set this camera up. In the field, this takes less than one minute to take it out of the case and put on the handles, fast as ever. So that is really a biggest perk and I think DJI did a good job with the case, the layout, the settings, everything just to carry around. Now this camera of course is really easy to balance and you can see here I have a Sony GM 1.4 here. Balancing at home cost me less than I think one minute. It's the fastest to balance camera because every other axis is actually meant to be in the center of the weight distribution. As long as you balance the lens, this camera should be balanced every other axis itself. So it is very fast and very easy to balance compared to almost any other camera. Just to note one thing, DJI didn't really talk about it, but it's written in that small little, let me see. There was this small little piece of paper here that you can't see. Let me take a photo of it later and then put it up here. It writes there that this is a counterweight. So there is a counterweight given and you can see it down here. And this counterweight is meant to be used when you are using it with the LiDAR unit. Now this is not written anywhere in the instruction except for this piece of paper. What happens if, if you don't put a counterweight, you have a more bouncy camera and you also cannot put as much weight on the lens without buying a big counterweight behind. So with the 35GM, it's just nice. I mean, I have left 2mm or 3mm of space just to shift the gimbal around. But it does balance nicely on this camera as you can see here. This is 35 1.4GM. Now, just talking about the GM lens itself, this is a Sony mount. So I actually purchased the DJI lenses here and I also purchased the Sony mount because I was worried whether the Sony mount have issues or not. And there is issues with the Sony mount. Uh, I have yet to, of course, go and try it more extensively. What happened is that out of the box, you can do auto calibration with the camera. You do get proper autofocus with the E-mount lenses. However, you cannot focus infinity. So if your LiDAR doesn't pick up anything in front of it, it tries to shift the lens to infinity. With the Sony lens, you don't reach infinity. You reach something before infinity itself. And the worst part is that even though, you know, you're supposed to use this thing here, this handle, and then turn the autofocus knob, or should I say the manual focus knob here, for whatever reason, you cannot go beyond the infinity that the camera think it is infinity itself. The only way to do that is to turn the ring in front of the lens and you can focus after that. So it's a bit of a bummer. Uh, probably I will try out the manual calibration one day. 
I obviously didn't have much time after that to play the camera more. But just to note that Infinity Focus straight out of the box with auto calibration just don't work, at least not for my 35mm here and not for my 50mm 1.2 GM. By the way, that lens do work out of the box on the camera itself without adding additional big counterweight behind. The 50 1.2 GM does work as long as you're moving slowly. If you're moving a little bit quick, it is not perfectly balanced. It actually leans forward slightly, but the motors here should not have any issues with it. Now that said, this camera itself, when you're using it in the field, it's not a very fast camera because the boot up time to start with is really long. I can show you here now. It's booting up. So I've just pressed thing and now you can see the logo just appeared and then the camera starts booting up. Starts booting up. And it boots up. So it is a quite a slow camera when it comes to booting up. This is definitely not a camera you can just suddenly take out of the box and just shoot. You have to boot it up and wait for it. So not as long as some RAID cameras, but you're looking at, I think about 15 to 20 seconds with this camera. So it takes a bit of time. Now, uh, one thing I want to talk about it since we are looking at the LCD now, this LCD is really, really nice. It is 5.5 inch, it's really big, and it is really bright. In daytime, you can easily frame with this LCD, no problem. This is probably the brightest and nicest LCD I have ever seen on a camera before, be it Canon Cinema series, be it compared to any DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, this is probably the best LCD ever. I mean, I have an OC monitor that goes to 3000 nits, but this monitor here, definitely viewable in daylight. You know, I was shooting in the sun, no hood, nothing, and I could see whatever I was shooting very, very easily. Even if I was not looking at it head on, slightly, like some slight angle here and there, there is no problems. Now, there is a lot of buttons on this uh, monitor itself and that's to change all the settings. So it's actually quite easy to change the settings on the system itself. It's quite self-explanatory. Uh, you can change some of the settings using the handle here. However, uh, just to note that this handle here is quite weird. So you are supposed to press this mode button, as my thumb is showing, mode button, and then turn the knob here. However, you can only cycle through three of the settings, ISO, aperture, and ND. You cannot cycle through the frame rate, you cannot cycle through uh, shutter angle, you cannot cycle through white balance using the handle itself. So to do that, you have to put on your camera and then do those settings. I mean, it's not a big deal because those things are normally things that you set up before the shoot itself, but it's just a bummer that you cannot press mode and cycle through them and then just change them accordingly. Or maybe they should just put a joystick on this on this handle itself, a small little joystick that you can just left, right, up, down in and it's better. Now, um, just to continue, one last thing on this monitor. When you do a playback, when you do a playback, as you can see here, it's actually playing back one of the videos. When you do a playback, there's no way to delete. It's just kind of weird. I can't delete the footage. The only way to delete any footage on this camera is to format it. Uh, you can't delete any footage that you think is totally junk on the camera in the field. At least I can't find it. If somebody do know how, just tell me in the comments below. I pressed every single button. I, I went to Control F in the digital PDF menu and I couldn't find it. Maybe I really have to look through every single page itself. It's quite yeah funny itself. Uh, also another thing is that this camera has no built-in speakers. So you cannot listen to any audio without plugging in a headphone itself. Now, talking about audio, the camera has obnoxious audio, literally obnoxious. <laughs> and that's because if you actually see, okay, let me let me on the 4D axis and then illustrate the problem with this camera. Once you have the 4D axis out, I have to ask you one simple question. And that is, where do I put the mic? There is actually nowhere to put the mic. I mean, you can put behind, right? I mean, some of you may have things put behind. I can maybe put here, facing the gimbal itself, that's kind of weird. Or maybe extend it out and face in front, but the gimbal is still in front of it. Or maybe I can extend the mic out and then shoot here. Maybe. Or maybe I can build a freaking crazy arm and go here, but no, my gimbal may hit it, it depends on how long your hood are. There's really just no good way to mount the audio itself. And what happened is that there is actually a fan on this unit. This fan, well, if you put a mic in any close proximity of this fan, you are just asking for it, you will hear the fan noise. So the audio on this camera is obnoxious. Let me play back the internal scratch audio of this camera. You can just hear the shh, 
the fan, the uh, gimbal sound, the motos and stuff, it is just utterly noisy. So, well, audio-wise, the only good way to use this camera in the field for the purpose of audio is to go wireless because mounting on a camera will just capture the back fan noise. Um, it's quite disappointing, uh, I'll say. I mean, DJ could just maybe extend a little bit here and then put the mic here and let me plug in my audio jack onto the head and I, that may have solved the problem. Or maybe allow us to, I don't know, attach a mic at the bottom here. If I don't want a focusing motor, I can just attach a mic here. Maybe that will work out too. But they need an audio jack on the head itself and that may solve some of the problems. I mean, not a hard fix, right? So yeah, so the audio on this device is totally obnoxious unless you're using wireless itself. Just there's no good way to mount a mic on this camera itself. Now, since we are already talking about the head itself, I would say it's the gimbal on this system. Um, the fourth, fourth axis is definitely the greatest thing ever. This fourth axis absorbs most of your walking steps as long as you are walking normally and slowly. You can try to run, but depends how much shake you have, your footage will still shake a little bit. And to really get absolutely stable and I would say as really like sliding footage, you will need to use the tripod mode and that will actually force your gimbal to lock on to a certain level as you can see here. So it's not like the gimbal is pure magic, you know, it is close to magic itself, still one of the most stable camera you can ever get. But the 4D itself requires you to still walk I would say as properly if you want to get the best effect. But if you're not working properly, it does absorb most of the shake itself. And if you want to get very stable shots, you need to know the existence of the tripod mode and use it properly. Now that is really about the 4D itself. The gimbal itself, nothing much to talk about. It is a gimbal. DJI has been making gimbals for a long time. It's just that as I said earlier, it is very easy to balance and works really, really well. Um, probably one of the nicest gimbals still because it's so easy to balance. It never has issues in the field. Uh, overall, I think I really love the stabilization of this system. Definitely one of the best stabilization you can get in the market today. And okay. Now, other than stabilization, there are other things that are really, really nice. One of the things is the active track mode. Let me activate it for you. The active track mode is really awesome. Oh, wait, give me a moment. I need to activate the gimbal. So actually the gimbal can be activated and deactivated based on your need itself. Yeah. So the active track mode is really nice as you can see here. It does actively track the camera itself and it does it really well. Now, uh, beyond just being a glorified, uh, I would say as a camera controller, or if not a glorified selfie camera, uh, it also acts as a really good real world uh, I would say as real world tracking device that can really help the operator. With this, you can do more complex movements like going around the subject, going past the subject, or maybe going top down like a jeep like style while focusing on the face, a lot simpler itself. Um, it is just a lot easier to do all those actions with a tracking. And actually in real world, you can actually track quite far behind. Let me show you. And even till here, the lens itself is not obstructed. You can actually even go further. So I mean, you can literally go all the way to the behind if you want to, but I don't recommend that. But you can see that it can actually track really, really far. I mean, more than just 45 degrees. You can just you can track almost like 70, 80 degrees from this side. This side, of course, there's a monitor blocking it. So this tracking is really, really good. And uh, combined with the autofocus and the 4D, you can really do more complex movements than you ever did before. Now talking about autofocus, this autofocus works perfectly well with the Sony lens you can see here. Just that uh, there is some issues with infinity. I have yet to try to do manual calibration. But out of the box, auto calibration allows you to focus quite clearly with 1.4 lens. Um, if you are doing uh, infinity, you have to manually focus it to infinity. For some reason, the auto calibration does not detect the Sony uh, infinity focus properly. With the DJI lens, I tried no issues. It does infinity focus properly itself. So that is something to note if you are using Sony lenses straight out of the box. It just doesn't autofocus infinitely for some reason. Yes, uh, there's also one more thing before I pass this section on recording and using in the field itself. And that is the number of tele lights on this camera. It's actually quite nice. Let me off the tracking first. If I do press record, there is one tele light here. 
There's actually also one Teddy light behind the screen. Then the screen itself turns red. You can see the red border now. And then there's also one more Teddy light on the handle itself. You can see here. Let me turn this down a bit. There's one more Teddy light here. Total of four different places to see the Teddy light. And I think this is very important to know that your camera is responding to you. And the best part is this Teddy light, at least on the handle, is facing me. So I do know that I activated the recording quite easily. I mean, looking at the monitor is one thing, but you know, most monitors just give you a small little record. This one gives you the whole screen, like the Sony cameras, great stuff. But with this additional Teddy light, it really helps me to find out whether the camera is recording properly or not. Okay. And uh, the last section I'll talk about is image quality. I have done two different video shoots, one in daytime, one in nighttime. I think you have seen it. Of course, just to note, I have used the one quarter black mist filter uh, by Case on this camera itself. So that's why it have this glowy, glowy effect. But other than that, uh, it is straight out of the camera with just a lock and a slight adjustment to the curve itself. The colors were really nice. I really like the colors for the daytime shot and there is almost no noise for daytime. Even in the shadows itself, it is very clean. Now, the nighttime itself, not so clean. ISO 5000, you can see the noise itself. I did not apply any noise reduction. In fact, let me show you what happens when you apply noise reduction to the footage itself. It can be really clean, like A7S3 clean if you want to compare. But you need to apply noise reduction. Uh, if not, you can see the noise. Uh, if you are using a handphone or laptop now, you maybe can see it. But if you are using some 30-inch monitor or some 55-inch TV or 65-inch TV, you should be able to see the noise even if you are viewing it from an okay distance of 1 to 2 meters away. You can probably see some of the noise in the frame itself. Not very distracting itself. Uh, I don't think I have much complaints on the noise. And in fact, the person I've collaborated with, you know, for the video, she's quite happy with it. Even though there's some noise, she said it's perfectly fine. Uh, so, you know, I didn't apply noise reduction. She just likes it that way. But that said, if you do want to remove the noise, applying noise reduction in post will get rid of it, most of it. But I really have to say the colors were really nice. As long as you dial in the right white balance, just adding the profile will give you really nice Rec. 709 colors. Really, really good. I do love the output from the DJI camera itself. Now, there's also one more thing I want to talk about, and uh, that is the ND filters. Now, the ND filters on this camera is really nice. I mean, it is one to nine stops. So, this is better than almost any other camera because most cameras don't give you one stop of ND. Most cameras start at two stop of ND itself. And most cameras don't even reach nine stops of ND other than a Canon one, which do 10 stops of ND. But they go in two stops increment, two, four, six, eight, ten. While this guy goes in one stop, one stop, all the way to nine. Now, that is very useful in real world shooting because uh, when I was shooting my video, I wanted some slow mo shots and not so slow mo shots in the footage itself. Those with slow mo, I use um, seven stops of ND. And those without slow mo at 24 FPS, I use eight stops of ND. So I was alternating between 48 FPS and 24 FPS. 24 FPS for daytime shoot, I applied eight stops of ND. And 48 FPS for daytime shoot, I applied seven stops of ND. With other systems, you can't do it other than the Sony system itself. But the Sony systems, once you apply ND, I think it goes straight to almost two stops of ND itself. You cannot have one stop of ND. Sometimes you just need that one stop. You know, it's just so nice. Uh, other than that, the camera really works very well. I mean, I love everything else of this camera. It's truly awesome. Other than the really heavy weight and the not so great audio, it is really nice. Ah, there's one last thing I want to talk about, and that is the battery. The battery of this camera isn't that good. Uh, when I did my video shoot, I shot for like nearly 15 minutes. You only leave, I think it was only left with 30 something percent battery life after that. And then when I did my night shoot for the dance one, there's only so much stamina the dancer have. Um, I shot for 30 over minutes uh, and I'm left with I think 50 something percent, 60 percent. So what it means is that if you are doing real world shoot with this camera without the wireless unit, without the expansion plate, uh, no powered microphones, just the gimbal, uh, a Sony lens, the LiDAR autofocusing system, this camera will last you maybe about 1 hour 30 minutes or less, or maybe 1 hour 20 minutes only. If you are using the wireless system, if you are using the XLR mics, and if you are using the manual focusing motor, that may even be more power consuming you know, compared to what I have here. 
So the battery life isn't that great. One hour plus is probably what you get. And this battery is actually quite big. It's, I mean, a 100 watt battery or 97 something watt battery. So it's quite a big battery. But considering how much things are being powered by this camera, this battery do get burned out really quickly. So if you are doing a long day or shoot, you probably need two or three of them at least to make sure you get through. Now, DJI claims two and a half hours and I went to read a claim. There is some fine prints and they say that you only get two and a half hours if you do this. Technically, all your axes must be locked. Let me lock every single axis out. And then you can only shoot in ProRes RAW. But ProRes RAW was already removed. So you have to shoot in um, ProRes. ProRes RAW, I'm guessing that in RAW mode, you just need to do a bit of compression. But in ProRes, you probably still need to do some encoding and stuff. So yeah. Whatever DJI claim the two and a half hours only work if you don't use the gimbal and you use ProRes RAW. So I don't think you can achieve it now. So yeah, that is probably the limitations. Other than that, I think this camera is really, really good. Uh, the other one last issue I faced in the field was that uh, there was a time where when I put in my handle, it didn't detect it. Like there was some connection failure to it. So what happened is that the contacts here, you can see, is dirty. So I just used my shirt and just wiped a bit and it'll be fine. So that is the only other thing that I found. So overall, I think that I enjoyed this camera immensely for the two shoots. And there's just so much good things about this camera. I probably will do a lot more video shoots before I do a final review of it. But my initial impression is that this is a very good camera. Overall, very reliable. Be in autofocus, be in the stabilization, be in overall usage is quite reliable. Just that, you know, you might understand the battery is not so great. The mic port or should I say, putting the mic is quite a pain in the ass unless you got wireless. Um, the boot up time isn't that fast and it's heavy. And it's also expensive, yes. So, uh, just to note, the package I have here in Sing dollars is about, I believe, $11,000. I mean, not including the lens here, by the way. So, just the camera itself with the E-mount and I also purchased the focusing model here. It's about 11,000 Sing dollars. So in the US, you can say it's about 7,000 plus. I'm also buying a spare battery and that will jack up the price at a few hundred dollars more. Uh, I may one day also buy the wireless unit. So if you are looking at a full setup without any lens, just E-mount, all the necessary support system, expansion plate, counterbalance, whatever, you're looking at a camera about 14 to 15,000 Sing dollars. And that will translate to approximately about 10K USD. So by no means this is an affordable system. It is an expensive system. And unless you are really into gimbal work, then you buy this. If you're not really truly into gimbal work all the time, you may want to consider just getting maybe uh, some other cameras with a uh, RS2 or maybe some other gimbal. Because in those systems, you can still attach a mic, do many things, put on a tripod and still work perfectly fine. Um, that's really it. Now, there's also one more thing I want to talk about before I end this whole video. You notice I bought some DJI lenses and that's because I really didn't have much confidence that the E-mount will work perfectly on this camera itself. Because the E-mount, you know, it's not even a DJI product. I mean, you can't see it, but this is not a DJI product. It's packed like a DJI product, but it's not a DJI product. Uh, I'm guessing that this is third party and there was no licensing. So DJI couldn't put the logo on it without getting in trouble. So this E-mount is not perfect. And I already said just now in the review, it's not perfect. So I was a bit skeptical. So I actually purchased the DJI lenses. But in the air day, it turned out really well. I enjoyed my time with the 35 1.4 and I'll probably try out with the 51.2 in the future itself. That's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this short little video, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.